Termites, it's night three. So happy you're all here. It's going to be a very big weekend. Um, the Masters is on. I'm leaving my phone on, which I normally don't do when I'm with you guys. Whoops. I'm leaving it on because the grand termite might call. Yeah, not because it's story time, but the grand termite is on his way here, and I need to know where he's at. And then I thought maybe he could say hello if he calls. What are we drinking? This is so great. Thank you, Bush Light. Look, can you see? That is corn. That is a thing of corn, and on the back it says for farmers. I got this in Missouri. I think it's mostly only in the Midwest, which really isn't too fair because there are farmers everywhere. Um, but they tend to focus on the Bush Light product. That kind of goes to us. Not everybody takes to it. Let's put it that way. And what does my glass say? Iowa. The answer to life's eternal question, who's drinking so much Bush Light? It is Iowa. Missouri, too. I can't speak for any other states. I only know that we, probably Kansas. Mm -hmm. I don't think Illinois would, there wouldn't be enough, too many other old style people and all those other beers. So how about this? This is for the old people. I know there's, I ate all of my friends now because of um, COVID. I only see the old guys at the golf course, which is fine. They're wonderful people. They're a lot of fun. But it'd be good to have some friends that are under the age of 75. So if any of you are available, um, you know, because realistically, those guys, even if they make it to 100, that's 25 more. Well, that would be okay. But, you know, just to, to, to better my odds of having friends that are alive, if anybody wants to be my friend, I'm open. Uh, this is to prove that I'm old. Look what I got. Yeah, at Barnes & Noble. Ready? I've so my mom. My mom's going to be so jealous. So when a lot of times when I can't read that good because it's too dark, put this on your head, and then look at this. It even tilts down by going like that. Who's ready now? I'm fucking ready for anything. If there's an intruder, snap it on. Just like that. If they're short, boom, you got them. Tall, no problem. I'm really, and then I don't know what the red's for. Is it, can you see the red? What's that for? That's like devil shit. I don't know, but I'm super pumped about this. It's called the Energizer. It was at Barnes & Noble, if anybody wants one. Love it. Let's get back to Loretta Lynn, shall we? Do we have any other housekeeping items? Keep going on YouTube. That's where my pubcast is, too. They're not the same. Um... This is a little more intimate. We started first here, the termites. I've, I've included those as termites too. I think you would all get along. I do read all the YouTube comments. I try to, I've learned how now to respond to them. I can't do it on my phone. That's why I have to do it all in a chunk when I'm sitting down. Now I sound like my parents. I can only do my work when I'm at the computer. I just, they come to my email and it's, I can't, I don't know. I can't, when I hit reply, it doesn't work right. Anyway, so, Comment all you want. I'm responding. I've learned a lot from you guys. Um, here we go. I left off. Uh, she's talking about butcher hollering, getting her picture made. We were talking about getting your picture made, which is not something we would say in Missouri, but I think anywhere south of Missouri, that's what people say. I'm going to get my picture made. I still haven't watched Coal Miner's Daughter to get the Kentucky accent down, but I'm going to. I'm going to watch it. I know, because right now my accent sounds like Tanya's. So that's not really fair to you guys. I haven't done my acting homework. Um, but I will tell you, I did watch a movie called The Twelfth Man. You should go watch that. It's on Netflix. It's like three years old. Anytime there's a new World War II movie, I am immediately informed by my dad. And it's a good one. It's really good. Nazis, Norway. It's good. Okay. 25 cents. This is Here's the story of my picture and Grandpa Ramey. 25 cents was one-fourth of a day's wages for daddy. So some people might think it's a waste of money for folks who, don't, who often went without food to spend money on pictures, but those folks don't understand how mountain people take up with one another. What? I don't even know what that phrase means. Take up with one another? <laughs> it's like, you going to eat on that for a while? Eat on it? I mean, I know what it means, but 
I don't know what take up with one another. We wanted pictures of each other, so we didn't think it was no waste of money when this camera feller showed up. We'd stand in front of his box. He'd put a sheet over his head. We'd go off with the film because we'd give him our word we'd pay him when he came back with the pictures. It was worth it, too. When we were sitting around on a cold winter night, we'd pull out pictures of friends from across the holler and look forward to spring when visiting was easier. Well, I mean, I know you got a lot of snow, but what else you got going on? You can't, you could probably walk over to your friend's house, right? You're not going to freeze to death in Kentucky. I don't think so. Thinking about that camera filler coming back with pictures, knowing he'd get paid like we promised, reminds me of another good thing about folks I was raised with. Their worth, word was worth gold. I still can't get over they think Hitler's going to bomb the holler. I, I, that literally makes me laugh out loud to myself unloading a dishwasher. I'd rather have the word of most neighbors in Butcher Holler in the 40s than have any lawyer's contract today. Exactly. This here feller eventually came back with our pictures, and he gave all of us a bunch to pick from. We only ha had to pay the quarter for the one we wanted. I picked the one of me that I thought was best, but I didn't make up my mind alone. I thought I'd ask my grandpa to help me. His grandkids called him Grandpa, and his kids called him Poppy. His real name was Nathaniel Ramey. The Ramey being part being changed from the Indian name of Rainy. Rainy to Ramey. Why would you make that leap? Why not just stay Rainy? You changed one letter. Huh. Grandpa was a full-blooded Cherokee Indian. Indians didn't talk much in those days. Well, maybe to you guys. Maybe they talked a lot amongst other Indians. Or did just all Indians there weren't talkers? I don't know. Seems like when they got that peace pipe going in the Tatanka, the movies I've seen, Tatanka, they talked to each other. They just sat real quiet and stared into space like they was thinking a lot. That's what my brother-in-law does. Sometimes they read, although most nobody in Butcher Holler could read. I think the Indians was still bitter about the way the white man cheated them out of most of this country in the 1800s, and I don't blame them one bit. Me neither. And they've built some wonderful casinos since then. Good for them. All about my Indian grandpa did was sit in a rocker, smoke a pipe, and grunt. If you spoke to him, he'd grunt some more. When I was little, I'd sit under his feet and talk 90 miles per hour the way little girls do. He'd sit in silence until finally I'd shut up. Then he'd grunt, and I took that as a cue to talk some more. So I'd rattle on. Mommy, why won't Grandpa talk to me, I used to ask. Poppy don't talk much, she said, but he loves you and he likes to hear you talk. I took mine and Mommy's pictures to Grandpa. I was showing him then, going on and on about which ones I thought was best and why, but then it didn't bother me. But then it didn't bother me if I thought he was listening to me or not. Grandpa, I said, look at these here pictures. Which is the prettiest? Mommy or me? He laid down his newspaper, pulled from his pipe, pulled his pipe from his mouth, and spoke the first words I had ever heard him say. Wow, ever. Remember, I was close to being a teenager, and I was real sensitive. Young lady, he said, you'll never be as pretty as your mother. God damn, and he's a mean Indian? It's not how the stories are supposed to end. Those were the only words he spoke to me about it, and it broke my heart. I bet. At least that's how it felt to the tender heart of a country girl who had an inferiority complex about her appearance. And, and why? The Loretta Lynn was beautiful. I haven't seen a picture of Mama yet. There's probably one in the middle. I doubt. I don't think Mama could be that much prettier. Loretta was just prettier as all you want to be. Grandpa was an unpredictable spirit, and like... Most mountain folks, he sort of figured he was on his own, he was his own law. If somebody did something to somebody that was wrong, they'd face the consequences from the person that had been wronged. No policeman hardly ever intervened. He might have been killed, he might have been killed. And no fancy lawyers got guilty people off the way they do on technicalities. In my day and time, if a man trifled with another man's wife, the husband could kill him and nobody did a thing about it. Mm. Well, you definitely save a lot in legal fees, for sure. 
A man didn't even flirt with another man's wife. In fact, he often didn't speak to her unless she was with the, her man. I might have been about 10, I'm not sure, when Grandpa was walking with the woman he was going to marry, my grandma. They were just courting, but everybody in the holler knew they was boyfriend and girlfriend, and they was probably going to get married. I'm sure Grandpa stole a kiss or two now and then, what we called sparking. Did y'all write that down? Instead of hooking up, y'all sparking? But nobody did much in the way of infection until they were married, till they was married. And nobody in his right mind would have been too friendly to a woman that was spoken for the way my grandma was. This old boy was following grandma and grandpa along a path, and grandpa thought he was following too close. So he told the feller to drop back a few paces. In fact, I think I, he told him to go plumb away. Plumb away. You go plumb away. Still my favorite is Tandy Tucker's, I'm going to get gone. I'm going to, I got to get gone. I got to get gone. The old boy didn't go. Grandpa turned, pulled a pistol from his bib overalls. Wait, I, I missed that. And shot the heel off the man's boot. I told you that the men and women in Butcher Holler were good shots. Folks said all you could see going down the trail was dust from that man running. Grandpa walked over and picked up the old boy's boot heel. That guy never came back for it. If that feller hadn't run, Grandpa would have likely shot him dead. That's just how things was in the holler. And that night at the movie premiere, after I sat next to my husband and watched Coal Miner's Dog, and I couldn't help but think of a couple people in the holler who'd made a big difference in my early life. People I hadn't talked about much in my first book. And when I got to thinking, I realized that two of the most important people next to my immediate family was a cheating husband and a chicken thief. How many of you can say that? The two of the most important people next to my immediate was a cheating husband and a chicken thief. We're on chapter two. For you nerds, that's page 15. This chapter is called Big Swim Sandy or Drown. Whew. The cheating husband belonged to Aunt Boyd. Aunt Boyd really wasn't an aunt, but we called her that. That's how my family rolls with cousins. There could be 500 people at a wake. Well, those are all your cousins. Really, Dad? All of them? Yep. All right. And then I, here's the one I never understand. Well, she's your cousin twice removed. I've never even Googled that. What the fuck does that mean? And then I asked my aunt. My aunt said it to me. And I said, what does that twice removed mean? She goes, I don't know. It's just what we say. And walked away. There you go. I still haven't Googled it. Aunt Boy, she wasn't really an aunt, we called her that. In Butcher Holler, almost everybody was related to each other. Even when someone wasn't a relative, we also call, often called them uncle or aunt. Anyhow, come to think of it, this story would make a good country song because it's got a cheating man, a woman on the war path, and a baby that ended up awful close to dead because of it. There's a lot going on for a holler where there's not a lot going on. I tell you, these people know how to get shit going on. You've got to get gone and get shit going on. All right? All right. All they need is a fireworks stand and goddamn be a blast. Aunt Boyd thought her husband had been fooling around with another woman. My mommy said that one day when I was about one year old, I was leaning against the old nail keg. What's a nail keg? Anybody? I'll Google it. When Aunt Boyd began to get all worked up about things she was going to do to the woman who she thought was sleeping around with her man, Daddy kept a big stick behind the cabin door for security in case somebody tried to break in and Aunt Boyd saw it. If I ever catch that man, if I ever catch my man with that woman, she said, picking up the stick, I'm going to knock her head off. She explained it all. She explained all of that to Mommy. Trouble is, she also demonstrated. She drew that giant club over her head and accidentally hit me in my head. Mommy said I cried for five days. The big knot came on my head. Within another week, knots as big as hen's eggs came up behind my ears. Then knots started coming up all over my head. Mommy started doctoring me with her Indian medicine and talking to God every night. Mm, yeah, I'd probably rather, uh, you know, doc in the box. But if this is what we got, Indian medicine and talking to God. She was bound and determined to not let me die. God sent you down here for a purpose, Mama told me later. What if it's a kid who doesn't have a purpose? Fuck him. I can't see that God has any purpose for you, so I'm going to let them chicken hen egg lumps on your head just run amok. That's what I'm going to do. 
Daddy and Mama carried me to paint the Paintsville Hospital. Here we go. Oh, well, wait, I've missed a thing. But all her Indian doctrine couldn't do, couldn't help my head. And about three weeks later, that hole from the blow began to fester and rise, infected and filled with fluid. Daddy and Mommy carried me all the way to the Paintsville Hospital where a hole was drilled behind my ear. And another hole was drilled close to it. They cleaned the pus and fluid from my head and inserted cotton into those hole, two holes. I should have been left in the hospital. Maybe I would have healed sooner and with constant medical attention. But Mommy and Dad didn't have no money to pay for a hospital stay. I don't know how they afforded any of the treatment. Maybe the county paid for it. Maybe the doctor did it for free. My head was shaved for four years. Oh, my God. Because of the stuff still inside my head, I had no balance. God. Oh, my God. This is why we need affordable health care, right? Jesus Christ. I mean, this was a long time ago. But matter of fact, here's a good story. My uncle, um, my great uncle, my grandpa's brother was a cop in St. Louis. And he got shot in the leg. And... Um, they couldn't afford a, uh, to the surgery and stuff, so they cut it off. And he got a wooden leg that was screwable, that was screwed on, screwed off. And then one time I asked my grandpa, what was the day after a prohibition like? And he said, well, it depends on who you are. He goes, for me, it was a giant pain in my ass because my brother Jim got drunk at a bar and unscrewed his leg and hit a guy with it. And he got a, my grandpa got a call from the bartender said, your brother's in jail and his leg is at the bar. Which one would you like to pick up first? That's what happens when you don't have any money. <laughs> we didn't have any money then. Um, uh, I didn't learn. I had no balance. I didn't learn to walk until that sickness finally cleared up. I was four years old before I took a step. Oh, my God. Mama carried me in a quilt she had made from cut-up overalls. Now, that I would buy. I bet that quilt felt great. Country people in hollers know how to make a quilt. The Amish do, too. They're really into quilting. Their quilts are good, but I'd prefer one just from some country lady like this because they, ah, the Amish, there's a thicker. I like the thinner ones. I can see that quilt today. Mommy got it in her head that one of the most important things she could do was keep my feet warm, and that led her down a path she'd never have taken unless she was scared for one of her babies. My people had the work ethic. They worked hard for the little they had. They didn't take handouts. I, I recorded a song called They Don't Make Them, like my daddy anymore. It contains a line that my daddy never took it, took a handout. Truth is, there was a time when mama did ask for a handout, and I know it must have been near to kill her to do it. I was around three when mommy went up to Murphy's five and ten cent store near the big sandy river. She told the clerk how her and her husband had to carry their daughter 24 miles a day to get medical attention, and how the doctor suggested that she just let me die at home. Well, that's not very nice. Mommy told the clerk that she determined I was going to live. Then she told that man my feet were going to freeze inside the homemade quilt. She asked the clerk to give a pair of shoes to the little girl that she refused to let die. The clerk said he wasn't giving no handouts no matter whose feet were cold. Fuck you. I'll never know what was going through Mommy's mind when she walked out of the store, not a penny in her pocket and her baby in her arms. Go down the road, Ted, she said to Daddy. You take Loretta, Loretti, oh, they called her Loretti, and go on. I'm going to stop at another store. I'm going to ask somebody else for a pair of shoes. Daddy went ahead, carried me in that little denim bundle on his long and dreary walk home. I didn't have no appetite. It was real underweight. But even a skinny child is a hard load to carry for 24 miles. Oh, can you imagine walking 24 miles in a Kentucky holler? I mean, no. That's far. I walk five miles at golf, and I'm done at the end. And I have good, comfortable shoes. Foot joys, dry joys. <sighs> I didn't have no appetite. Was real anyway. Skinny child. Blah, blah, blah. Dad was only five feet eight, five feet eight inches tall, weighed around 117 pounds. Mama was only five feet tall. Let's hear it for the shorties. Blah, blah. Loretta Lynn seemed tall. How she get so tall if these people were all so short? Mommy acted like she was taking off for another store, but that's not what she'd done when Daddy was out of sight. She went back to the store where the clerk wouldn't give her shoes, and she stole the little red shoes that she loved. Mama never told me she stole those shoes until I was a grown woman. Mama said she was practically running with the stolen red shoes when she caught up with us. We didn't stop till we got to the old river bridge across the big sandy river not far from her house. Then Mama started to 
put those shoes on my feet. They were bright red and had buckles. I could see them to this day. I could picture Daddy's face when he saw them, and he knew what Mommy had done. When Daddy started to run, I asked Mommy why he took off like that. Loretti, he just wants to get home, put them new shoes away so don't get dirty, she said. Truth was, he was running to hide what Mommy had stole. All right. I think that's a pretty good place to stop now that we've stolen some shoes in the holler and she's got cotton in holes in her head because the wounds are a festering. Oh, termites. That's probably all I got for you tonight. Are you comfortable? Is it getting chilly where you live? It's a little chilly in the Midwest, but quite frankly, it's unseasonably warm, which is great. But it'll get weird if it doesn't get cold at some point. The, yeah, it's, go, it's like going on a little too long. Not that I'm complaining about it, but it's odd. Just saying it's odd for the record when the world doesn't exist and someone finds this story time video. I'm just saying there might have been global warming. It's 70 degrees on Thanksgiving coming up. That's what they're predicting. Normally, it should be about 38, but whatever. All right. Well, we didn't get a call from the Grand Termite, but he is coming. Unless something goes terribly awry. I'll tuck you in for now, though. Get your fall pajamas out. Do you have your fall pajamas out? Mm -hmm. Your good termites. Your worthy termites. Some of you are going to be really chubby if we have to do lock-in again, but that's okay. Who cares? Thanks to everybody out there working. In the, because my dad had a little surgery. He's fine, but the hospital, they're working very hard. They're overworked. And it was super weird because you could only have one guest per patient. So there was nobody in there. It was like The Shining. It was very strange. I was nominated because I don't have children, and my mom, he didn't want her in there. So that's what happens. When you make a conscious choice, you know, I don't think I'm going to have kids. Turns out I'm the sacrificial pawn for COVID. See how that all worked out for me? You didn't have kids, Kathleen, so you know what? We're going to possibly kill you first. Okay, termites, pull your sheet up. Get in your coldest spot in your bed and know that you're worthy termites and night-night termites.